We are here with Alexis Ohanian, who you know as an investor, he's forever an entrepreneur, really. It's true. Also activist, mm. thought leader when it comes to equality, when it comes to climate. Let's start with the hat of entrepreneur and investor, because sure. all I talk about daily at the moment is generative AI. Yeah. How is both. that democratizing things? Because you're all about democratization of the internet. That's where you started. Yeah, it is a game changer. And, and certainly I do feel somewhat responsible given that Reddit provides a lot of the training data that's made, yeah. you know, OpenAI possible and these other platforms. I, I'm excited. I have never been more exhilarated, right? I started in tech in 2005, so in almost two decades, I've, I, I've never woken up every morning more excited than I am right now because of this technology. With that, I'm also more anxious than ever, mm. uh, not just about the potential downsides, of which there are, um, but also because it is an existential crisis for every business to understand how this technology, how this breakthrough yeah. is gonna change the way that they work. We think about it within our own venture firm, 776. We think about it across our entire portfolio. And uh, like I said, it's exhilarating, uh, causing me to have a lot less sleep these days. Uh, but but I, I do feel it's, it's transformational. And, and this is a trend that is important for everyone to pay attention to. Go back to the anxiety a little bit and yeah. the data that it's being fed off, in particular mm -hmm. using Reddit, for example. Do we think regulation's the answer there? Do you think it's self-regulation? Mm -hmm. You think about a lot about that across various parts of the tech ecosystem. Yeah, okay, I wanna use lowercase r regulation, which I do think is important. The, the, problem, the problem for me is intellectually, I think this makes sense, mm. to give rules of the road, to figure out a process, because look, these breakthroughs are happening literally week to week. Yeah. The part that gives me pause is I've seen enough meetings down at the Senate interviewing you know, heads of, you know, pick your favorite social network, where folks were so ill-equipped, they didn't even know the business model of Facebook. Remember yeah. that infamous Senate meeting? Like, my concern is the very people who should be at the forefront of understanding this technology in order to figure out how we could properly create those rules of the road are among the least informed. And so that gap is what worries me, because I do think it's important to create some structure. Mm. I think this, look, it's also important to make sure this industry continues to evolve here in America, because we know that counterparts, for instance, in China, they're gonna triple, quadruple down on this technology as well. So I think it is important for us to keep making progress here in the States as, as quickly as possible. And at the same time, it is so important for our elected officials to get as smart as possible, as fast as possible, because a ham-fisted, a, a poor decision here uh, could have some pretty serious repercussions in, in terms of our global competitiveness, but also in, you know, in terms of hamstringing what could be very transformationally good technology. This is not a small feat. If we hadn't started that with the words generative AI, I would have thought you could have been talking about crypto too. Ah, uh, <laughs> well that's another one where, you know, obviously I, so I was uh, among the earliest investors in Coinbase yeah. back in 2012. That has been a company that's continued to operate in the most above board ways possible in over a decade and they're, they're begging government to give some clear rules of the road and clear guidelines. And so I do think there are similarities. Uh, the implications though, for what AI is doing right now to transform industries and you know, the, the power it has to make our lives more efficient and at the same time you know, potentially have some disastrous consequences means that it is, it is the priority. What about, going back to your portfolio companies, what about yeah. the investment landscape right yeah. now with valuations as they are, with the macroeconomic headwinds as they are, but potentially opportunities, particularly in seed and series A and early, yeah. early venture? It is a great time to be an early stage investor. I was a Y Combinator partner and I just started my own venture fund back in the, last, in the wake of the last housing crisis. And that was actually among the best times. We mm -hmm. saw companies like Airbnb get started when we didn't know anyone was gonna show up at demo day because everyone was so nervous about their being investors. The, the fires of economic anxiety forge amazing new companies. This, mm -hmm. is, this is actually a great time to get started. I think the vintages of this year and the next year are gonna be phenomenal. There are lots of people who are gonna make investments in AI companies that are just chasing trends that are gonna not have a great time. Um, but what we look for is, you know, really proprietary data sets, uh, technologists, founders who really deeply understand some unique angle or, or focus around this technology. Um, we just announced the company that we had funded, uh, uh, Covey, uh, that's building software ostensibly just to help teams hire better, manage the pipeline, manage HR, recruiting, all those things better, cheaper, faster using software. But because of these breakthroughs in the last six months, 
they've now been able to create an, an AI assistant that makes it even easier for someone in recruiting, say, mm. to run a query of, you know, in natural language of like, I'm looking for someone who has 10 years of experience, who's been at a venture-backed startup before, who's, you know, only switched, you know, three times in the last 10 years. You, you, you can start imagining the ways that um, AI performs a very clear service to just do the sort of grunt work of office life a hundred times more efficiently and more effectively. And so that's, it really has to come back to, you know, is this solving a problem for users, not just do they have AI in their slide deck? 776 is about investing in software and startups with heart, though, and humanity. Are you worried about this current environment that we allocate less to diverse founders, to mm. people that don't look like us, sound like us, have mm. diversity of thought, because that was really a focus in 2020 for you, mm. leaving your board seats, mm -hmm. 2021, 2022? You know, our, look, our first priority is outsized returns, and we believe the way to get there is to build as uh, diverse a team as possible, to broaden and have as diverse a network as possible. I actually, I don't think these two are mutually exclusive and I always lean into excellence as being, that, that's, we're gonna do this job, we're gonna produce outsized returns, we're gonna do our best to beat all comers and we're gonna do so in a way that aligns with our values. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason, you know, we said from the start, we're never gonna take money from, let's say, suspect LPs. Uh, we, we actually publish, you know, you can, you can go see, we survey our LPs. We, half of our LP base are women because we said we want to create more opportunity. We want an LP community that's actually a reflection of society. Mm -hmm. So we went out of our way to select LPs. We, we, we do not have Saudi money, for instance, because more and more founders were asking, hey, who are you making money for? And it actually turns out even three years ago, and especially today, it's, it's a competitive edge to say we're being so intentional about even the money that we raise that I think in the long term, the very best founders are thinking more and more about this. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you look at the sectors right now that are doing well, climate tech is one of the ones that just continues to grow, even amidst all this sort of uh, nervousness. Um, we have climate tech companies that are still, they're, they're getting up rounds literally right now. Um, it, because you have a market that's showing resilience, you have a sector yeah. that seems pretty counter-cyclical, uh, and, and these are founders that are mission-driven, right? They're, I'm a little jealous of them because, <laughs> you know, I, I did not know what I was doing in 2005 starting Reddit. Yeah. They are just as y young and naive as I was, 21-year-old CEOs right out of college, but they are so purposeful and intentional in what they're building, and they've chosen climate tech because they see it as an opportunity to not just make a ton of money, but also solve the greatest existential crisis yeah. you know, our planet faces. And that, that gets me fired up. Look at what you built, though, from 2005 and look at where mm. it potentially is now. Mm. How hopeful are you around exits, around IPO, particularly of Reddit, which was yeah. in August worth 10 billion? Yeah, uh, look, I certainly can't comment on any IPOs. I, it seems like this market I don't know, could it open up by the end of the year? I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but I do know uh, these days I'm so grateful. Most people who stop me on the streets now are actually, you know, in the past they would shout out Reddit, they'd thank me for that. But these days, honestly, it, it's more often been Angel City. Yeah, sports. Uh, and who would have thought a women's football club could be a big part of my legacy, but I actually, it's, it's either that or pancakes. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, I love that those. People, yeah, that's what, that's what that <laughs> people seem to resonate with, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I, I, I'm grateful, actually. Look, you share your pancake making through yeah. social media, yes. whether it be on Instagram, Instagram stories, but mm -hmm. also you're on Twitter. I noticed you have a blue check. Yeah. How do you feel about Twitter as an ecosystem and whether you pay for subscriptions. Uh, well, I clearly pay, uh, but it was also, they were- You weren't it, gifted by Elon. I thought Elon did not hook me up. <laughs> uh, this, was, it, this was interesting because, you know, we talked about this a lot in, in Reddit and verification is such a sticky thing. And I actually appreciate the fact that, you know, for a company to go in and say, hey, I'm gonna pay for this because it's meaningful for companies, right? We have a, 776 has a brand, justification for wanting to have verif verified, you yeah. know, check mark just by saying like, we're the real one, we're not an imposter. Um, and then by delegating the responsibility of those blue checks, like it's a no brainer for me as a business expense to say, I'm gonna pay for 776 to have this and I'm gonna pay for all my employees to have it because I don't want anyone impersonating any of us. And it's- You believe that that is believed? Yeah, I, well, I realize the culture around it is muddy, but I try to look at this stuff from, from first principles. The 
the whole why behind Blue Checks started because of celebrity, right? Yeah. It was, you know, probably Ashton Kutcher. I don't know who we could we could Google this. Whoever was the first Blue Check. We should but chat GPT He was a big, but you know, it's not always not always the right answer. There's still hallucinations yeah. <laughs> uh, from time to time, but but yeah, there is this. Um, there is this, it has been built into this idea of blue check equals celebrity. Yep. And then, and that's how it started because whatever, Ashton Kutcher was the first one and he wanted the celebrities to feel good and so they could come on and feel like they were special. And then over time, it just metastasized into so much more. Mm -hmm. And I think if we could all men in black brain wipe everyone and start <laughs> over again and just say, hey, look, we have these global platforms. People are gonna impersonate people. We just need to know who is human and who is who they say they are. This, I think, does a pretty good job of getting to that. So if we can remove the status symbol of it and just think of it as like, this is just, and I realize you can't undo the culture, yeah. but uh, yes, I am guilty of paying for it. And, but like I said, it was a business decision and I, frankly, it's more valuable to me to have everyone on our team yeah. with that blue check mark. Because I think they're special. They deserve it. Don't tell me that my team doesn't deserve that blue check. You deserve they it, They are Alexis. special.